All right, we're going to talk about problem solving today. So what we're going to look at is kind of the four-step approach to problem solving. So the first step is understand the problem. So you have to understand what is being asked of you before you can solve it. A lot of times in this understanding the problem, you're going to look at putting down the information you know, uh, maybe what information isn't needed, that kind of stuff. Step two, you're going to devise a plan. You're going to devise how you're going to solve this problem. Right. Step three, you're going to carry out the plan and solve it. Pretty straightforward. Step four, look back and check the answer. A lot of times we get working and we, we kind of get done, we solve it, we, we're just good. But then we don't look back to make sure if that answer is even relevant, if it makes sense, or if it even worked. Okay. Now it's really important that we don't skip steps either. A lot of times students, what they'll do is they'll jump from the problem straight into solving it. They don't devise a plan, they just start adding and subtracting. We want to work through each part of this in process. So our first example here is a man purchased five shirts, each at the same discounted price. How much did he pay for them? So the first thing is step one. What is it being asked of us? Well, the problem is says, how much, so step one is, how much did he pay for them, okay? So our question is, our problem is, how much did he pay for them, okay? So that's, that's kind of our problem here. We just took it straight from there. What other information do we have? Oh, that he purchased five shirts. So we know he purchased five shirts. And then we look at each at the other pieces. Now the problem here is now we're going to go to step two, devise a plan. Well, we look at this, well, how can we devise a plan? We're missing something. We only have five shirts. We know we had five shirts, but it's asking how much, how much he paid for them. It doesn't give us a, a price for each shirt. It does not. It doesn't give us a total to, to work on anything. It doesn't say he bought five shirts and three pants and he had this amount. So we don't have enough information here to go to finish step two, work to step three and step four. So this is an example here of not having enough information. Now the next one here is we're going to work through all four steps here, okay? So it says by paying $100 cash up front and the balance of $20 a week, how long will it take to pay for a $680 bike, okay? So we have to understand the problem, okay? Step one, well, what is the, what is the process? It's, it says, basically we're looking at how long to pay for $680, right? Okay, so what other information do we have? We have $100 uh, cash up front, and then $20 per week. Okay, now we're gonna look at step two. Step two is trying to look at, okay, how long is he gonna take? Oh, and I probably should put up here, I should have put in here $680 total Cost. I should have put that up there right there. So step two, we're going to devise a plan. So our plan is going to be look at, okay, well I know that if I keep adding $20 per week, I should get at some point uh, to 680 or even greater. So I'm going to set up my, uh, set up a model for this. Okay. So I'm going to say, well, if I started with $100 and I added $20 per week, so I'm going to use W here for my, for my price per week. That would give me total, right? And so now I can put in a little bit of extra money. So my total cost was 680 So I'm going to substitute in that 680 So there's my plan, okay? So my plan is here is I'm going to solve that equation to get to how many weeks it is, okay? So step three, solve it. 680 equals 20W plus 100. I'm going to solve this. I'm going to subtract 100, subtract 100. This gives me 
580 equals 20W, divide by 20, divide by 20, uh, 29 equals W. So we would have 29 weeks. So I'm going to look at that. 29 weeks. I'm going to check that. Okay. So if I have 29 weeks, I'm going to multiply that by 20. Uh, 29 times 20 would be 580. I'm going to add up 100 to that. That gives me 680. Okay, I've checked it. Does this make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. I didn't have like, it's not going to be like 100,000 weeks. So I've checked my answer. I've went through all four steps to get it. Now, one of the things that when you're solving these problems, there's lots of different ways to solve a problem. You could come up with an equation. You could have came up with a table, right? So we could have said week zero, uh, total amount, we would have been 100, week one, 120, week two, 140, and then went all the way down until we equaled it up. So we could have created a table. Sometimes we can create a list. So understand that when you're working on these problems, just because you do it a certain way and somebody else does it a different way, those both those may be very adequate and, and get you to the exact same answer, okay? So there's lots of ways to get to the same conclusion. So here in our last example, it says, four runners are in a race, Maria, uh, Rifa, Thelma, and Debbie. How many different arrangements of first and second place winners are possible, okay? So step one is identify the problem, okay? Uh, how many different arrangements uh, first and second okay okay so step two I think what I'm going to do I don't think I could I might be able to come up with an equation uh, maybe the easiest thing to do would be to list them out there doesn't seem to be that many contestants maybe I create a list so step two is my, pro my problem is what I'm going to do is devise a plan. I'm going to create uh, a list of all possible outcomes. And then I'll count them up. Okay? So that's pretty straightforward. It's Maybe it's not the most efficient method. But it's the one we're going to work with today. So we're going to go to step three. We're going to implement that. Okay. So I'm going to abbreviate it just to our first initial. So if Maria was in first place, then she could have Aretha come in second, or she could have Thelma, or she could have Debbie. Okay. So if Maria comes in first place, there's three different possible outcomes for that second place. I don't really care who comes in third and fourth. Okay. So if I look at Aretha, I could have Maria, Thelma, or Debbie come in second place. Some of you guys are probably starting to see a pattern here. And Debbie. And then last is Debbie could have uh, Maria, uh, Aretha, and Thelma. Okay, so I'm going to count these all up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 possible uh, arrangements. Got to run out of space there. Step 4. I want to check it. I want to make sure that that's a possibility. Okay, so does this make sense? Did it, uh, did it answer the question? Yes, it answered the question. Um, does it make sense? Uh, there's only, there's four contestants. If one of them gets it, there's three possible outcomes. Okay, well, I, hey, look at that. Four times three is 12. Uh, so I've looked at those possible outcomes. So that's problem solving. 